Oakley Dokley guys, so I've been wanting I made a comment the other day about how I wanted to build a a wood rack for on our deck that I could just pick up with the tractor. And this is kind of what I came up with. It's all welded together, so we're gonna give her a test. But I gotta find some real short tarp straps. And then that tarp strap will just hook on this ring, eyelet, wrap around this bottom rail right here. And that's what would hold it on. So, and when you take, when it's empty and you're out in the bush, like take this thing right to the bush with you, flip the tarp over the very top lifting rail, which is this one up here, cut your wood, set it in place, right? And set it down right on that, those three rails down there. When it's full to the top up here, or even if you want to put a couple on top of inside there, you guess a guy could. Then you flip her back that way tarp it down that way the wood is covered up from rain or snow so it doesn't settle down on it yeah the back will be open a little bit but I don't think that's that big a deal I think this would work out quite nicely what do you guys think there it's kind of a pyramid right so the water can shed off the top I put a rail here, full length, and tied it on with some heavy zip ties. But I gotta leave the front, I can't zip tie the front, otherwise you'll be cutting the zip ties every time, there's no point. So I figure a couple of short, I believe I've got some in my truck, some real short tarp straps. And that'll hold the front, we'd be good to go. Hoping this will work. We'll give her a test here tomorrow. Anywho, I'm going to let you guys go. We'll talk to you later. Alrighty, guys. How's it all going today? It's uh, Saturday here. Uh, December 11th or some darn thing like that. Anyway, what are we doing? Well, I just scraped up the ground here a little bit. Uh, Got to go. Went. Let's see here. I filled the bunks out in the field out in the pasture for the cows on Tuesday afternoon uh, filled everybody right up right full and that lasted them until Friday I didn't give them no other feed until Friday uh, yesterday actually filled them uh, not right full yesterday but almost we had lots of shit going on from Thursday late Thursday afternoon evening and still ongoing so uh you could see here with this cut feed pile so you guys remember how we had four peaks one two three four and we're into the fourth peak obviously because that's the start of the pile anyways um let's see how long this lasts like it's the 11th now so we only got nine ten roughly more days since we tub ground see if we get that pile done by the 25th of December basically Christmas right I don't think it's gonna happen we'll definitely be into it like we are right now but I don't think it'll be done so but we did it 25th of November so if it lasts until the 25th of December so that's one month two months three months four months so December January February end of end of March we should be looking at wrapping up this cut feed pile at the end of March. So four months, uh, that ain't so bad, right? Anyway, I gotta open those two gates right there. We're gonna pull some feed down because it's standing up, like I've said before. So we gotta pull some feed down and uh, we're gonna fill all the bunks up out in the pasture. Whether I'm gonna actually drag a bunk home and fill that portable bunk or not I don't know but the steel bunks I did not fill yesterday right up so we got to do that and then we might end up back in Regina well I'm anticipating going to Regina to pick up a horse we've got a pony that is not doing too well 
uh, CP's new pony. Unfortunately, what happened, I have no idea. Uh, went to the barn Thursday morning, and her and Tucker, our lineback buckskin, were in the alleyway. Well, it's our own fault. We didn't close the gate, right? But no big deal. There's nothing for them. The gate was left wide open. They could walk in and out. They were in the alleyway that we load out through. Like that alleyway is 30, 40 feet long by 12 feet wide. So anyways, the two of them guys were in there. The gate was left wide open. It was just a four foot gate. Like they could go in and out as they please. Anyway, she was walking a little sore legged. And I didn't think too much of it. I just figured, ah, she's been standing. It was kind of cool Thursday morning. So left her alone, went back to the barn to do chores in the evening, Thursday afternoon, and she's laying down in the friggin' snowbank, which is very odd for her, and normally she would come right to us. There we are. Anyways, uh, she didn't want to really get up. I got her up, I got her, walked her into the barn. We phoned, phoned our regular vet, who is not a horse vet. He admits to that. Uh, he gave us some suggestions on who to call. Finally got somebody out here at, it was like 8.30, 8 o'clock, quarter after 8 in the evening. They did some checking up on her. They made a couple of suggestions. Uh, we did not really care for the suggestions they made, which was to put the horse down. They figured she had a twisted gut or something like that. Anywho, we didn't go for that. Um, long story short, we decided we would give her some penicillin, which we did, and see how she does come morning. Well, morning came, she's, uh, she's still alive. The vet didn't think she would even make the night. What was the problem? The initial thought was maybe it was like colic, it's a stomach problem. And I don't, I, we still, at this point, we do not know what is wrong with Maggie. Um, we got her into Sherwood Animal Clinic, who is a horse veterinarian clinic in Regina on Friday morning. She's been there ever since. She hasn't come out of that clinic. And... They thought maybe it was, we were thinking it was tied up and to treat what tied up is, it's a term, something goes wrong with the internal organs type of thing. It affects their kidneys, so on and so forth. And well, y'all know, if your kidneys shut down, then your whole body's gonna eventually shut down. And basically to help clean that problem out is to do a saline IV and flush their kidney, flush their system, right? So they did that two times yesterday, once with us there, and then again in the afternoon, and they did it again this morning, and she's still having issues. We do not know, they're thinking it could be a symptom of called HYPP, and what that basically is, the way I understand it, is a deterioration of a muscle, of the muscle. What causes it? I have no friggin' idea. I don't know, I'm not a veterinarian. They give us these big names, big terminologies, blah, 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 and I don't understand half of what the fuck they're saying. Tell me how to friggin' treat the animal and I'll do it and so on and so forth, right? But why did it come on just like overnight, right? So, and they're saying a stressful situation. They're saying if she could have been rode hard or exercised really hard. Well, that never happened. All they're doing is playing in the friggin' corrals, eating out of a grass hay bale, and it's just grass. So they said if the grass was too rich in potassium, that could possibly do it. Never ever had a problem with this grass hay before. 
We've had numerous horses in and out of the yard. Nobody's ever gotten sick from the feed. So why all of a sudden just this one particular horse? And we don't have no history on Maggie because we just got her in September. So CP just bought her. So we really don't know, is this an ongoing issue for this horse? We don't know. But at this point, at this point, last I spoke to the veterinarian, uh, the prognosis is not good. CP left. She's in uh, Regina. She went to the vet clinic. She's at Sherwood right now. And I'm going to get these animals fed up. And we'll see what happens. She's a... Uh, yeah, this is a tough one. Anyway, guys, I'm going to let you go. I'll get these gates opened and I'll bring you back when we get out to where the cows are. Talk to you then. Alrighty. So, the bunks are not completely empty. They had like four bucket loads yesterday, but I didn't fill these bunks right full. So I'm gonna have to bring a, two more bucket loads out for these other two steel bunks. And the portable bunk, it's still like three quarters full, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. But we will, I gotta get them straw out here is what I gotta do. So we'll, we'll bring a couple more bucket loads of uh, feed out and then we'll see if I just bring straw out and shake it around or if I hook up to the shredder with Big Blue and shred straw out. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But I'll let you know. We'll talk to you later. There. That's better. Now they got some fresh straw lay on. They'll like that. Just kind of shook it out. I didn't bother with the shredder. I just brought three bales out and shook it out with the tractor. Not as good a bed as what the shredder would make when it rips it apart, but that'll work. That'll do. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. Anywho, let's get back to the yard. I'll uh, take a peek at the other horses and calves, and then I got a feeling CP and I, she's back home now. I got a feeling we're going to be loading up a bale of hay and maybe some oats or something and heading back to Regina because uh, she felt that her horse wasn't really being fed worth a damn. Anywho, we'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty guys, so this is basically the feed they're on. And it's just the grass hay. There is a little bit of alfalfa in this bale, but not a lot. And, well, look at him, right? Right, Tuck? You big bugger. There's nothing wrong with Tuck. Binford's over there just sunning himself, enjoying life right now. And there's nothing wrong with him, so I don't understand. Nobody can come back and say, oh, your feet's no good. They can kiss my ass. You come over here and I'm going to punch you in the face. Um... We're going to grab, we've got basically the same kind of hay in the barn in square bale, small square bale form. And we're going to grab a bale of that stuff and take it into that veterinarian's office. And I don't know what the hell to say. I think, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know why I'm going over everything that's been said to me through my brain here and everything we've done and everything we fed and it just don't make no goddamn sense for something like this to happen just out of the blue uh, so that's how I feel anyways anyway guys I'll let you go maybe I'll bring you back when we get to the veterinarian's office we'll take a peek and show you how Maggie's doing and go from there talk to you later look at him see you can't leave a pail laying anywhere for more than five minutes because Tucker is gonna come and take it on you good morning everybody it's Sunday December the 12th how are you two yo-yos doing Binford good morning the sun is up big and bright. 
And well, we already saw Tucker's doing just fine. Back to his little tricks. Uh, so, yeah. You little shit. Yeah, I'm talking about you, you little bastard. Anyways, what's going on? Well, just got done picking some eggs, feeding some grains. Uh, these guys don't get grain in the morning. They don't get grain very often. I only give these guys grains uh, when it's really cold and we put them in the barn. Anywho. What's going on with Maggie? Well, the veterinarian shop phoned this morning. And she goes, you want the good news or the bad news? Good news? I said, well, let's give us the bad news first. So... She spilled coffee all over herself on the way to work this morning. Well, that's pretty bad news. Good news, Maggie is up and standing on her own. Um, and she is finally showing a sign of recovery. It's been, what, since Thursday, so she's finally coming around. There's been a lot of stuff going on. And we're going to go in. We did see her lot yesterday. We went in and saw her yesterday and talked with the vet in person yesterday. And uh, we'll be going back in here shortly. Uh, CP wants to go in and see her. Because <laughs> yesterday when we left, things still were not looking good at all. But there is a sign of hope here. So that's good. That's good. Uh, sorry I didn't bring you along for that yesterday. Um... I'll talk to the vet and see if I could do a little bit of videoing of Maggie when we get there today. And I'll talk to CP and see if she wants me to even put Maggie on video. We'll see what happens. Anyways, you guys will be, uh, let's see here, more or less the second to know. How's that sound? CP and I'll be the first to know and you guys will be the second to know in the long-term outcome of this whole scenario. So... I gotta put this pail away that Tucker wants to play with and run around with, you little bugger. And uh, I gotta get these eggs to the house, so we'll talk to you guys in a little while. Alrighty guys, well, sorry I didn't bring you back. We are just left the veterinary clinic. Uh, Maggie is doing a lot better. And at this stage she's, uh, they're saying tomorrow she'll be coming home. Right, babe? Yep. Yep. Are you happy? Yes. Yes? Okay. Don't listen to every vet you talk to. <laughs> Don't listen to every veterinarian. It was right. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see how things keep rocking and rolling here with us. With Maggie, I should say. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on her when she does come home for the next few days. Potential special feed. Not so much special, but don't give her no treats, no oats. Stuff like that. No horse cookies. No more ho horse cookies. Oh, so, anyways, we got to pick a couple items up here. And then get home and uh, cut a bunch of firewood. So stay tuned. Yahoo. We'll catch y'all later. I got CP here with me. Little Tinkers in her sweater. Mocha dogs. And we're going to start cutting some wood. Chainsaw's warming up. Brought the rack out. So let's. this will be the test. See if it's going to fucking work or not. Waiting on a man, waiting on the chainsaw. So, we'll get this thing filled up uh, and I'll bring you guys back. I don't know if it's gonna work or not work, but test of time. Talk to you guys later. And the CP's on a roll of trying to clean up bush. But there's our pile that we're gonna light up here pretty soon. And all of that is just from like 10 or 12 trees of multiple sizes that were right here standing literally right here it took us a while because they're all tangled into each other but that's full and when we get home i'll show it to you with the tarp open 
I can kind of show it to you from the back side because the tarp closes the front right off to the bottom but that's what it looks like there and well it's full right up to the curve bar or the tripod in here see that so and then we got those big guys in there that we got split so there's more than enough wood but I'm gonna light that up soon and I'll bring you guys back for the light up and sign off talk to you then there won't be long now and that pile will be burning to the point where you won't be able to even get close to it within 10 feet yeah it wants to fall over yep anyway guys give us the old thumbs up comment subscribe and fun 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 let's get her done yeah 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 rabbit ears <laughs> talk to y'all later alrighty guys so uh, there it is what do you think was that a good idea log rack fire log rack because I don't know if some of you remember how I we cut a bucket load of wood and we just came up and we dumped it on top of the deck and then we had to stack it up nice all this way what do you think babe was it a good idea huh yeah but I need extender legs in the front yeah, because out in the pasture, when you set it on the ground, you got to find a relatively level spot because it's kind of wobbly. But other than that, works good. We were able to lift it, <coughs> excuse me, right up here onto the deck. And this way. What? Mm. Why two? Because it's going to be cold. Yeah, for when it's cold, it'd be nice to have a second one. That way you're loaded up and you're good for a while. Mind you, this will last us for a while too. Me too. I'm not building another one right away. <laughs> anyway guys, let me know what you think of this. Talk to y'all later.